DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Welcome to DJN TV and Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe. Now introducing the one and only Ben Stowe. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe. This has now become like two weeks in a row that Ben and I get to talk with one another. For those of you who do not know, that seems to be almost a record. <laughs> well, you know, last week was a lot more fun, though, because it was. Uh, it, it's nice to see you in person, John. And obviously, uh, you know, if people had chronicled, chronicled our misadventures off camera, maybe it would have even been more entertaining. But uh, <laughs> the uh, the errant search for ice cream, which uh, I, I think you saw my picture. I did find you some. You did. Uh, yeah, I had a layover after after you. So I uh, took my time and used it wisely. I, I found some ice cream. But anyway. Uh, and, and it's interesting that so we flew together from Philadelphia back to Minneapolis. And then we went our separate ways because Ben had another flight. And I had my drive home. And I think the way it worked out, even with his little bit of layover and with his eating of ice cream, we probably were within five to 10 minutes of getting home time wise. Yeah, we checked in with each other. Yeah, we were each getting to our door about, 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 uh, about the same. Before, yeah. yeah, it's crazy, crazy. So for those of you who do not know, uh, Brent and I were in Allentown last week with the mobile DJ meetup. It was a great little event. If you get a chance if they're going to do it again i would assume they're going to do it again um next fall i would think they're going to try to aim for again but just keep an ear out because that was such a cool little event to be able to hang out and talk shop a little bit talk family talk and and ben was actually there as an attendee i don't think i've ever seen ben Stowe attendee before you know what uh i think that is the first time ever in, in my time in the industry that my badge said attendee. And it was kind of fun. Obviously, I ended up doing some work while I was there anyway, and that's all right. I mean, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to, to change who I am. I think if people come and ask for help, I'm not going to say no. Um, you know, and, and we helped some people get some show specials and that sort of thing. But it was fun. It was fun to, you know, people said, when are you speaking? I said, I'm not. They said, you're not. I said, no, it's great. Isn't this great? Uh, you know, obviously, I love speaking and I love sharing knowledge uh, with the industry. I mean, this show is, I, I think, you know, proof enough of that. But it was nice. It was really nice to just sort of be one of the gang, you know? Yeah, yeah, that was it was it was neat to have you as one of the gang. Because there's so many times we get to shows and you're doing this and that and you're running here and there. And it's like, there's been so right there. Oh, there goes been so right there. You know, that's that. what I loved about it, because, you know, at Mobile Beat or DJ Expo or, or these bigger shows, uh, you know, I'm I'm outnumbered 3000 to one or 1500 to one or whatever it is. And so it becomes a matter of just very quick handshakes, uh, you know, quick hellos, uh, brief, almost non answers to people's questions saying, hey, catch me next week and let's get you a real answer, because there's 10 people waiting behind that person. And, and um, and then there's always the people who do email the following week and say, you know, hey, I saw you at the show, but you were really busy. I didn't even get close to you. And and, and that's yes. kind of heartbreaking, too, because yes. you think, well, you know, I mean, I, I went to the show because I wanted to see people. I wanted to be accessible. But, you know, at some point there is just only so much of you that can go around. And so this was really nice. This was really laid back. Uh, there were, I don't know, 100 or so people there probably yeah. uh, and change. And I just, I never really felt stressed out at any point. Uh, and it was just really nice to have long conversations, to to have time to break away from the event, to go to the grocery store and get Howie cupcakes for his birthday. You know, things like that would just, I would never have that. I mean, that's never on the radar. Not a bit. At a big show. You know how it is. You, you know, you do the big shows. Yeah, we have been there and done that. So. Run, 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 you know. It is, so. it is. And of course, if you guys are thinking, wow, show sounds so awesome, and I wish I could go to one coming up in February. This is this is the segue to the ad part of the show. So let's just do it now. So uh, you can come and see the one and only Ben Still on stage February 24th, 2020 in Las Vegas at the South Point Casino. That's right. Ben Stowe, Ben, Ben Stowe, Stowe, Stowe on stage at noon Monday, February 24th. That was like the worst delay echo I've ever heard. You're that welcome. was 
I've been practicing. That's, you could do much better than that, John. You know, but anyway, <laughs> probably good. But anyway, yeah, uh, Photo Booth Expo, the DJ uh, NTV Expo at the PBX. I will be there. Uh, Going to have some great content. Really excited about that. I will make sure I have time to say hi to everybody. I don't know how outnumbered I'm going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be well attended, but still not like over the top. So I think it's a good balance. I think it's going to have enough uh, that it's worth coming to, and it's not going to be too much that's overwhelming. So. Uh, I really do hope people will come. I think this is a really exciting time for our industry. I think, you know, we're seeing obviously now the announcement with consolidation for next year. And, and this this sets the tone for that. And uh, I can't think of a better guy for it than you, John. So I think uh, I feel I feel better about our industry than, than I have in a while, uh, just because there's obviously been changes and changes yeah. can be scary. You know, I think sometimes, you know, they say the devil, you know, is better than the one you don't. And and now I, I think we all have a little bit clearer picture about where our industry is headed. And, um, you know, with, with a lot of thanks and appreciation to, you know, Ryan and Jake and the people that carried the ball this long, uh, it's, it's nice to, uh, see it in, in good hands, uh, you know, for a new direction. So, yeah, it, it should definitely be kind of an exciting time as we put together such a large event building off that photo booth expo time and the links for um the info the show down below in the description you guys can go click on that djntv.com slash tickets and the promo code is also there you can use that to get the cheapest tickets right now and i'm telling you we've got this really cool thing coming up on black friday that is something you guys are going to want to check out i've got i bet there's a dozen djs who have asked for a specific thing and it's going to be available black friday but we'll talk about hey, that you got more. me curious I'm yeah like, this i is, might even actually resurface on black friday i'm gonna try that's a day i just try to stay low you know <laughs> yeah exactly that's that's pretty much it's gonna be an automated system that particular day the only thing i was i was toying around with doing because a lot of you guys know that i do my heart my handyman channel and black friday is like one of the biggest days for people to go buy tools and different things oh, at, yeah. oh yeah this is the time to go to home depot and buy when my these. grandmother was alive i would send her with a list you know <laughs> it's i knew she had no problem she was about five foot and nothing but she had no problem braving the crowds and i said here grandma these are the things i want <laughs> I you to get from it. home depot you know oh. i'm you know i'm over six feet tall i'm not going i'm like i'm not you know these, yeah. i'm gonna get trampled but this five five foot tall grandmother she, she had no problem you know <laughs> yep yeah. hey, you know i was just in home depot today and, and you so you see all the you know things that are out for the christmas season and i i, I had to get what i needed and leave quick because otherwise i was going to be broke in a hurry so really quick yeah because for, if you guys don't shop at home depot or lowe's next week is when they start setting out the black friday things and some things might be a dollar or two cheaper black friday but there's some things that they are actually list right away at that price and then it's that price until they're gone for those See, we have here in Bemidji, we have a Home Depot, a Menards, which is sort of a regional thing. Uh, those in the Midwest will know. Uh, and it's actually a bit bigger than Home Depot, the store is. Wow. And then we have a fleet farm, a fleet supply, uh, right? And they're like literally like bing, 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 right together. Uh, I, I call it like Red Ink Corner, you know, because if I get down there, I'm in the Red Ink, you know? So <laughs> it's a dangerous area. <laughs> oh, man. There's too many, you know, I, I look, I like tools. I, you know, I don't know what guy doesn't like tools, but in fact, I cleaned, I, I'm flying tomorrow. I'm on a plane and I cleaned out my toolbox and I got rid of anything that I felt wasn't absolutely necessary. And it was still 47 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Oh, and you guys, have, you guys have seen Ben's backpack. Just imagine what his toolbox was like. Okay, it's, so let's uh, dive into tonight's uh, topic. Tonight, we're going to be playing a, a new game show called Does Ben Agree? Oh, this is going to be good. I have, I have culminated some statements and mentality from different areas when it comes to buying gear. And we're going to utilize these I'm statements. I'm already sighing. I'm already we're sighing. We're going to utilize these statements to see if Ben agrees with these statements when it comes to making decisions on gear purchases or if he disagrees. And then we're going to dig into each and every one. Yes, a good time to buy a multi-tool. Robin, you are exactly correct. I will be buying a new one. I don't know if I talked about it on a show. I'll probably have to wait until after. I'll t we'll talk about what happened with my multi-tool in Allentown at a different time. You know, I, I uh, you you missed my birthday. Uh, if you're buying multi-tools, it was just a couple days ago. So, you know, just, I mean. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell the story of the multi-tool. Then we'll get to our game show. So, so. My my one son, I had I had a multi tool that I picked up for him, and it was it was not a cheap one. It was a, a forty nine fifty dollar Gerber one, a really nice one. Yeah. And he knows that when I am traveling, sometimes I need to tighten a screw or something, and I need to have a player. Well, he snuck it into my bag, my check in bag, oh, or my bag that would typically no. be checked in. But I was 
uh, carrying it. It was all carry on. So I get to the security and I go through and it beep, 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 and you're like, sir, there's there any knives in your bag? Psh, no. What do you think? I'm a rookie. Well, they, they're like, there, there's this thing in there and it's like, well, I'm looking at it and it's like this little tube about this. It's like, well, I have a little flashlight in there because I, I carry little flashlights for if I'm doing video and such, I can turn a little LED flashlight on and sometimes it lightens our face up a little bit. It's like, yeah, it's yep. probably a flashlight. No big deal. Well, he looks in there and looks in there. He doesn't see anything. And, and um, then he starts going through another bag as he's trying to figure out. And in one of the little zipper pouches inside the suitcase, there it was, the little Gerber the little Gerber knife. So the, he's like, well, sir, you can either surrender it or take it back out to your car. I looked at the security line. There was no way I was going to get out and get back in. So there oh, we went the 40. No. Now, now, the thing is, is that my son thought he was doing a favor to dad and helping right. with the situation. And dad lost his knife. So I can't be upset from the standpoint that his heart was in the right place. He was right. thinking of others and he was thinking ahead. Right. I'm going to be biting the bullet and buying another one. And I went to, actually, we were at the store this afternoon, and they didn't carry these one that was close enough to look like it. So, Home Depot. That's Friday. <laughs> It'll be my trip. So, yeah, good time to buy. I have one. a little multi-tool in my uh, laptop bag that is TSA friendly. It uh, looks like a snowflake. Uh, so each tip is a different screwdriver point, uh, nice. you know, uh, Phillips uh, flathead, or as they call them in Japan, plus and minus, by the way, which I think is brilliant, you know, but anyway. Much easier. Uh, but yeah, uh, various torques, that sort of thing. And then the inside of the snowflake uh, is uh, various, like, like uh, bolt head sizes. Mm -hmm. So, but the end result is the thing looks like a throwing star. <laughs> And well, that's safe. <laughs> every time I get flagged, and they, you know, and, and, they, and they're always, you know, they're like, "You can't touch it, sir," but you can observe me going through your bag. And I said, uh, and then now I've just got this, you know, like I don't even wait for them to, because they never can find it. They, they never can figure out. Of course, you've seen, if you haven't seen my laptop bag, uh, go watch that show because this thing has more pockets and zippers. Anyway, yep. so now I just, as soon as they get the bag out, I said, "You're looking for a thing that looks like a throwing star. It's not. It's in the outside pocket on the bottom." All right. Uh, oh, yep, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, it gets me through much quicker. Though. And there we are. Uh, yeah, so there, that, that was our story on the knife. So, Okay, so these statements of when it comes to buying gear. Our first statement, Ben. If I'm looking to buy speakers, the best way is to look at the watts and that the speakers are rated for when making my decision on buying speakers. Nobody really said that. You made that up. You I knew said these were paraphrased. You're, you're worse than like Geraldo. You want to just get me riled up right away. I know, you know? that's right, exactly. I've got the really, I've got the easy ones there. <laughs> I want, but they're. <sighs> so I'm pretty sure we've done, I know we've done shows on Three this. Three or four shows and we're doing it. We're talking about it in a little two minute segment. Go. Watch don't really matter. They matter to a very small degree. And the degree that they matter is to understand that in order to have watts, you need watts. So therefore, the more watts that a speaker will consume, you need to supply those watts from the wall. However, you do not listen to watts. Watts does not correlate to loudness. Uh, the only way that watts would have any uh, correlation to loudness is if we knew what the initial sensitivity was, and then we could calculate what the loudness is. But ultimately, no. It's a terrible barometer of a loudspeaker. And these days, with marketing doing what they do to things, uh, I think sometimes uh, specs have been stretched to the, the breaking point, uh, maybe. Uh, no, short answer. I disagree completely. Wattage uh, should not be considered, especially when talking powered loudspeakers. Watch is important with passive loudspeakers because we need to match an amplifier to it. And that's the only reason it's important. There we go. Uh, in my opinion. So, Excellent. No. Okay. Next one. Strongly disagree. <laughs> Next one. If all I'm right. looking for lighting, I'll look for knockoff versions online since all lights are made in the same place. You're making this stuff up. I, I, these are paraphrased things. Answer I'm the question. The, I'm looking for the extra hidden camera. I'm already on camera. There must be another camera. This is. Are you, you, you are you listening to my? Are you de-escalated to like Maury? You know. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to look for uh, knockoff versions because all lights are made in the same factor, the same place. Well, uh, in the spirit of Maury, uh, the results are in, and that is a lie. So, 
No, first of all, they're not all made in the same place. Second of all, knockoffs are knockoffs. Uh, I mean, you can buy knockoffs of all kinds of things. Uh, you know, three, even if things are made in the same place, it doesn't mean they're made the same. So now that doesn't mean that there aren't quality products that are made by, uh, you know, Chinese manufacturers that are selling direct into the market, but it's very little oversight here. First of all, you know, most of the major lighting companies have contracts with manufacturers and they have people living in China watching to make sure that things that come off the line are what they're supposed to be. And then they're testing those things. Uh, and they're really trying to hold those people honest, you know, um, you don't have much recourse other than the desire of the factory in China to do the right thing, which there's a lot of stories about that going both ways, you yep. know? So I, to me, I would just say, first of all, it's not the same thing. We can establish that. Second of all, it's not necessarily made in the same place. And three, even if it is, it's not necessarily made with the same components or quality of parts. Uh, and so all those things being said, caveat emptor, you know, buyer beware in case you're not up on your Latin. Uh, you know, in other words, you do you, but don't, uh, you know, I think a good example, and this is such a hot topic, you know, and I don't understand why it is, but at the end of the day, use whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, but we had a guy who brought in four, uh, lights that he had bought from a direct from China type of thing. They were moving heads. They all had failed within three months and he brought them in and we said, we, we can't fix these. We have no way to get parts. And he said, well, they told me they're exactly the same as the Chevet. We said, well, I doubt that. And he goes, well, you know, you're a Chevet dealer, get the Chevet parts and fix them. You know, and he was a little bit <laughs> miffed and of course this factory wasn't replying to him anymore and you know yep. so now now this landed on our desk well out of the four lights no two even had the same parts in them and oh none of them had chevet parts in them and there was i mean we opened them and we showed them We're like look we can't this you know you were misled man. Wow. i mean that's a nice way of saying you were lied to you know and uh it, it is what it is now there's other people who have good luck with this uh and I can't argue with your results. You know, I'm not here to police international commerce. I'm not here to, to defend uh, the patents and the intellectual property and the laws that are being broken when you do that. Cause they are, I, it's not my fight. Um, you know, so uh, get what you want from who you want. Uh, but just don't believe for a second that it's the same. So excellent. That's, okay. Our next one, yeah. moving back to audio. When I'm looking for Thank speak, goodness. when I'm when I'm looking for speakers, the best way to find out about speakers is asking on a Facebook group. <laughs> really, uh, the advice on Facebook groups are great. Where did you get these comments? Uh, well, huh? You I, made them up. I'm basing everything on, on things we've seen online, so I can I can that's stimulate fair. That's the fair. conversation. That's I've seen these things too. I just uh, we're I, we're stimulating was, the conversation. I was looking forward to some real in depth. This user is questions. this is important stuff we're talking about. These All right, are, so here's my okay. answer to that. <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with asking on a Facebook Facebook group. I think there's a lot of value in collecting a larger data set, and there's a lot of value in in uh, getting people's real world experience. However, here's what I've found. 99 times out of 100, most people will defend what they own, regardless of what else is out there. Yep. Uh, and they will often do that without any comparative data. You know, I own this, I've never heard anything else, therefore I'm gonna defend this. And that's natural and that's normal. You know, uh, it's good that they feel allegiance or loyalty to, you know, what they, what they own uh, for me. My first loyalty is to my customers. Uh, we carry uh, something in the neighborhood of almost 300 brands. Uh, so, you know, certainly we have our favorites, but that's that's for a reason. There's, you know, that's that's been earned by these brands and their ability to produce a quality product and more importantly, support it. Uh, so I think I think it's good to put these questions out on Facebook, but do so understanding you are going to get 100 different answers or more. There's going to be little fights that break out. Uh, you know, people get territorial. Uh, you may not get any clear or meaningful information, but you may get useful nuggets. You may find people's experience with a product and you can draw something from that. But at the end of the day, if what you are looking for is clarity and a clear direction, I don't think you're going to get it there. 
So it just usually turns into, uh, you know, pardon the expression, but kind of a pissing match. So there you are. And I was I was hoping you were going to hit that that uh, concept that m- most of the advice is coming from people who have used one thing, and when they 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 heard something about QSC, they bought QSC. Now they're a raving QSC fan. Well, have you heard this? Have you heard this? Have you compared it? No, I just and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a legitimate thing. If you've had good luck with something, yeah, if they're happy with it, it's just based on you know. It's I mean, if you've only ever <laughs> driven one car in your life. You know, uh, you know, if you won't, I mean, you know, there's no basis for comparison. And uh, so, you know, at least you're going to hear that they're happy with what they have. But I'll tell you that I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to tread in some dangerous water here for a minute because there are people who answer that exact question and they'll say, I have ABC loudspeaker, you know, just making up a name here. And I have this model and, and they're like, and I, and I think it sounds great. And, and I know this model and I know this brand and it's not a real high quality brand. And, yep. and I just kind of go, wow, how can you even say that sounds great? I mean, have you never heard great sound like that? Are you kidding me? You know, well, but, but what do you say? Do you, you know, like for a guy like me, do I want to go on the forum and make this person feel bad about the person, about the speaker they have and they obviously like, you, you know, no, of course not. At the same time, am I doing the person who asked a question a disservice by not? Maybe, but this isn't maybe the, the place to do it. So I, I really, for me, I like to have these conversations privately, you know, and that's often where I'll, if I get involved in one of these threads, that's basically what I'll say is, look, reach out to me uh, privately and I'll tell you what I know representing these different brands and, and I'll share my opinions. And that's what they are. They're opinions. You know, I can give you some facts and then I can give you my opinions Um but yeah, sometimes I see people uh, say things about speakers and I just, I just Cringe. at that point, I'm like, you know, I just kind of say, well, I'm out. I, holy moly. What do you say to that? You know, it's like, you know, it'd be like sometimes you're on like a, like a, you know, sports car forum or something. And this guy's like, man, I got this 72 Yugo and that thing is amazing. And I'm like, have you ever driven a Ferrari? You know, <laughs> anything <laughs> but that car. For the record, I have not driven a Ferrari, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, th- whatever, you know, it's just that kind of thing where you're like, you've got to be kidding me right now. Like, you you know, you're, you've got to be, you've just, you're, you're messing with me. You can't really be, you can't. Setting that bar. I can't. Really, Next question. Really okay. So when looking for, for gear, buying used is just as good as buying new. Sometimes. Uh, I mean, obviously there's advantages and disadvantages, you know, uh, when you, when you buy used, you can often get a deal. I'll tell you this, and I don't want to make any of my customers feel bad. Sometimes I see my customers selling gear that I know I sold them and they're selling it used and they're selling it for more than I sold it to them. And I think I'm a terrible salesperson. (laughs) You know, like what I need to do is just start getting DJs to sell gear for me. That's a racket. Uh, you know, I'm not a salesperson. I guess that's maybe why I'm bad at it, but uh, but no, there's, there's no harm in buying used gear. Uh, you know, I think there's some questions, obviously, you know, the value proposition, you know, will you have a warranty? Will it transfer? Uh, you know, how well was the gear cared for? Uh, you know, what condition is it in? You don't know if it went down a flight of stairs or was in, you know, I mean, there was a guy who was asking me the other day about buying a set of speakers, uh, that had been damaged in a flood. They were, they were completely, excuse submerged. me, completely submerged. And I said, listen, first of all, it's going to cost you more than a new speaker to repair this one because you're going to have to buy parts. And it's, I mean, if you built a car one part at a time, it would cost way more than buying a car, you know? (laughs) So I said, by the time you buy both drivers and the amplifier module, it's going to cost you more than buying the speaker new. Plus you got the labor time into it. And lastly, there's biological harm, you know, and hazards in flood water. So yeah. I said, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't buy this. You know, I wouldn't even take them for free, you know, because it, it still wouldn't make sense economically. Yeah. That said, though, there's some great deals on used gear out there. And, you know, sometimes that makes a lot of sense. So I think it's just one of those things you have to kind of take on a case by case. And I think there are some things that I would buy used and some, some things I won't buy used. Um, one piece of gear that I won't buy used is motors, chain motors, hoist motors, mm. you know. If they fail, things fall out of the sky. And the pe- end. Yeah, people you get know, hurt. Even though our motors are inspected and serviced and certified annually, uh, even though I know I could take this used motor and have a certified CM Tech tear it down, and and you know, I just say, not I'm not going to buy used motors. Mm-hmm. You know, um, used cable ramps. You know, it's a chunk of rubber. Why not? <laughs> you know, 
Is it still rubber? Yes. Okay. Sounds good to me. You know? <laughs> so I think it just really depends, you know? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Case by case basis. Um, mm -hmm. So when I'm looking for speakers, I might as well buy the least expensive speaker from the manufacturer because pretty much all of their lines are about the same. They just cost more. Yeah. So I'll just play along because I, I just can't believe that's a real question. But it I'll just was. Play along. I heard this. This was a statement made about our friends at Electro Voice, and they were talking about ETX speakers. And there was a guy who's like, "I can do anything the ETX speakers can do with a ZLX." True statement. I just paraphrased. Go. First, I just have to recover from that. Uh, you know, because I I own Electro Voice speakers, the X2 Touring Class Line Array, which for those who are counting clocks in at about 4,000, almost, I don't know, about five, a little over $5,000 a box, passive, passive. Still have to buy amps. Uh, and even though ETX is awesome and weapons grade and has some of the touring class drivers, you know, the X2s would absolutely eat the ETX for lunch. So there's a reason it costs what it does. And there's, you know, it does what it does. Uh, there's a reason ZLX costs less. Uh, I think most reasonable, normal people, uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm implying this person's abnormal, so I apologize to that person. I think most reasonable and educated people understand there's a there's a price and performance correlation here, you know? Uh, and so, you know, for those that, that, that are believing this and are seeking that education, I think I'd say it like this, you know, we'll pick on cars, you know? Uh, and I'm not really much of a car guy, but since we went with the Ferrari thing and there's that new Ford versus Ferrari movie out, let's just go with Ford now. So, you know, you got the Ford Focus, right? And then you got, you know, Ford, you know, Mustang and so on up the line. And Ford, I think, owns Jaguar too. So just because they're all made by Ford doesn't mean they're the same car, right? Uh, you know, the Ranger and the F-150, you know, two distinctly different trucks. Um, and now you can see what I'm, what a car guy I'm not. Yeah, I'm you're kind of like, you're, yeah, you're, you're like, really out of my element. So let's go much. back. To yeah, let's, let's go back. Let's go to like ice cream brands. Maybe that'll be better for you. Uh, yeah, but we could, that could be a long topic. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, there is a price and performance trade-off. Uh, now, again, it doesn't mean you need to go buy X2. It doesn't need, need, uh, to mean, mean you need to buy, that's hard to say, uh, ETX. Uh, maybe ZLX is just fine for your application. It's a great box. Uh, you know, ELX 200 be the next step up in the line. Great box. I have a ton of EKXs in my rental department. You say, now, why is a guy who has, you know, literally a million-dollar touring rig also have EKX? Because sometimes you don't need to drive the Ferrari, you know? I mean, I don't always use Digico mixing consoles either, you know? Uh, don't take the Ferrari to get groceries, you know? Uh, so uh, there's another car reference. I'm struggling. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, anyway. really, you really are. It's like you keep going back there, and it's 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 almost like... like I'm watch. trying. I'm trying, viewers. I'm really trying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I suck at this. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, anyway, my point is that, you know, EKX is perfectly great for a lot of applications. And so we have those, you have the right rig for the gig, as I say. Uh, so, but, but just because it has the same badge on the front doesn't mean it's the same speaker inside. Maybe it has the same engineers, uh, but you can bet that there's going to be just a difference in quality uh, performance. There's a reason that they priced it. Uh, where they did. Now, I think they actually could have priced ZLX a little higher, to be honest with you. I think they over-engineered that box. I think yep. they built a better box than they meant to. Uh, and I think that's why we saw ELX 200 come out so quick is they they knew they needed that price point box where ZLX was. They built this great box and like, well, we better fill in the gap. So I guess we better come out with ELX uh, 200, you know, but uh, you know, it's a great box for what it is, but you're talking about a speaker that's, you know, in the $300 range. So there is a price and performance correlation when you're talking talk about those things. Okay, our last one. Thank goodness. The last one. So when it comes to lighting, it doesn't matter which company I buy from because pretty much all the companies are creating the same lights these days. Sometimes it feels that way. Uh, you know, not going to lie. Uh, that being said, obviously there are some individual differences in the company and within the product. Uh, I, I think this is a very broad category that we're trying to answer in a narrow way. Um, but, you know, certainly different companies have different, uh, different, you know, warranty policies and that sort of thing. Um, 
you know, I guess uh, I'm going to kind of take a uh, sort of take the, the easy way out on this one and say, you know, if the companies are making you feel that way, then maybe that's the case, you know. Uh, but I think that's that's also not the case at the same time. If you look a little bit harder and even, the, you know, let's go back to our analogy here. So Chevy DJ, Chevy Pro. Huge difference. Let me tell you, I own a lot of Chevy Pro stuff. And those ovations, I think you could take them to war. You know, I mean, they're just so well built, you know, and and I think that's very much by design. Obviously, ADJ has really, uh, you know, tried to uh, elevate where they're at in the marketplace, uh, you know, and below them, they have their Eliminator brand and above them, they have their Elation brand, all owned by the same company. Uh, and so I think what you're seeing is these companies are trying to differentiate. They're trying to, you know, cater to the right customer with the right product. Uh, for the most part, tours are not buying Chauvet DJ stuff. It will not hold up. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, and so, you know, with ADJ, they started kind of getting into that light production and, and certainly Chauvet DJ with their uh, Intimidator 475 and that sort of thing. They're kind of flirting with that that regional production thing. And then when you get into Chevet Pro, it is absolutely touring class. Elation is absolutely touring class. There's some major, major tours uh, rolling with the Elation stuff and that sort of thing. So I think if you do look within the the line enough, you're going to find some differentiation and you're going to find things that, you, you know, will uh, separate them a little bit. And, I, and I've heard this even when we were walking around NAM last year, I was talking to a fellow DJ and and he was lamenting the fact that he, how many companies had the same, you know, that same type of fixture or whatever that was, you know, the fixture. Bleh. And he and he was just like, Do, is there no creativity in the lighting companies anymore? And there's, I think there's two parts to that. One is that the companies have done such a, a great job of over the years of, of evolving to a high quality fixture that, that can do things. And secondly, is the, you don't hit home runs every year. Well, I'd say there's a third thing. There's a third thing, and that's profit. Uh, as people have begun to, you know, uh, buy these other fixtures, you know, from China and that sort of thing, uh, you know, they are forcing the hands of these U.S. companies to, uh, you know, try to cut costs. And R&D is one of those costs. So I think that is a part of it, too. I think, you know, we're not giving them incentive to develop product. Believe me. I think if they thought people would buy it, they'd make it. Hmm. Uh, so I, I do think that's a third thing. You sure. Know? I, think that's, I think think we have ourselves to blame a little bit here too. Yeah. So Good point. Sort of, you know, remember, uh, well, I guess maybe about 10 years ago or so when uh, people were talking about, you know, the end of the great Hollywood movie theaters and nobody was buying movie tickets and the movies in the theater stunk. And yeah. Of course, now I think, you know, we've, we've uh, you know, we've clearly come out of that slump, but it was sort of one of those chicken and egg things, you know? Are people not buying tickets because the movies are awful or are the movies awful because people aren't buying tickets, you know, uh, you know, so maybe, maybe both. It's funny know. that you bring that up on the day that Disney launches their thing. And now everyone who's not here is watching Disney plus tonight. And yeah, I'm competing with the Mandalorian. So yeah. I'm pretty sure there's nobody watching. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's a handful. That's it. Um, that's what my kids are doing right now. So they're having a great time. They're like, you bought that. It's like, no. I didn't, and you can't touch my iPad. <laughs> uh, uh, turns out uh, I actually got it for free for a year uh, because of a another subscription I had. So I was very happy about that. I was nice. going to buy it. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell them that, but you know, I was going to buy it. So very nice, excellent. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when things slow down. <laughs> I have to wait until uh, until Saturday to watch Mandalorian because I fly to Dallas tomorrow. Uh, and then I'm there uh, until I fly to Phoenix and I've got one day where I'll be seeing a, a, a very good friend of mine, a uh, guy that I met touring. Uh, he's a guitar player in a band that, that uh, I toured with as a tech guy. Uh, and, and, and it's so funny too, cause they're great. They've got 25 number ones and all kinds of awards and things. And yet he's just a super nerd. He's nerdier than me. He's in, he's more into the star Wars books than I am. Uh, and he's just a wonderful, kind human being, and I just love him. And and, and uh, his his son is really excited. I'm coming. We know each other. Uh, you know, I've had the privilege of being friends with him for a long time and staying in his house. And uh, actually, we, we went on vacation together this spring. Uh, me, him, and his son, and a couple of his uh, 
nephews, but his son wants to take me to the sci-fi store. And so, you know, we're going to totally nerd it nice. up, but I, I promised I wouldn't watch the uh, Mandalorian until I, until I get there. Uh, so Saturday, you've got, so it. I got, I got, I know, you know, we saw the previews at the star Wars celebration and I, I gotta, I just gotta wait. So uh, whatever life is hard, right? Yeah, that it is. You'll suffer. You'll probably still watch it before I do. It's one of those weeks. First, first world problems, you know. Yeah, first exactly. World problems. Exactly. It's tough stuff. So I got I got to wait until Saturday for me to you know watch you know a, a Disney episode with my rock star friend. Yeah, life is hard. Man. Life is tough all over. So, thank you guys for being with us tonight. And hopefully, either you you learn something. If not, if you got a chuckle out of it. If not, you know, hey, go watch Disney. I guess one way or the other. <laughs> well, you know, and at the end of the day, tonight's show was uh, kind of fun because it was largely all opinions. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can take it or leave it. It's uh, just it is what it is. I, I, unlike some of the people you'll encounter on the forums, don't really care if you disagree with me. I'm OK with that. He's OK. He, he his ice cream supply will not be diminished. And by the, right. way, by the way, for those of you wondering, before we started, there was an appearance of ice cream. Just going to say it. There was an appearance. Yeah, it's got to be sport now. My daughter came in here with an ice cream sandwich about, you know, sticking out of her mouth. <laughs> it looked like a duck bill. <laughs> yeah, she really did. Yeah. yeah. Like a duck I thought bill. it was yeah. a duck bill at first. It's like, no, that's an ice cream sandwich. That's about I'm ready to tell fall her that. I don't want to encourage it. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll be fun. So thank you guys for being with us. We'll be back at the top of the hour. Brian is getting things queued up tonight. We're going to be talking some music and such. So it'll be kind of a fun night with Brian. Once again, thanks for watching. We'll catch you, catch you in a bit. Bye-bye.